Hello everyone, welcome to the Rotax Sim Racing Challenge update, uh, the post-event review uh, from myself, Alex Goldschmidt. A big thank you, firstly, goes to Apex Racing TV, Sir Lee Thompson, one of the directors of the company, for his uh, speedy expedience for uh, allowing us to host this event via the official Apex Racing TV YouTube channel. If you want to re watch all the races uh, with commentary from both myself, uh, Adam Bath, and uh, Wei Han Chan with... Uh, Friedrich uh, Nichtel from uh, uh, a fellow <laughs> German um, who was on the uh, production side of it, the broadcast side. A big thank you to everyone for making this possible. Uh, already, um, just by the uh, YouTube uh, stream alone, we've had over two and a half thousand views. A big thank you to those that have uh, made this a very, very uh, successful, if not fraught, first time out in the uh, the esports racing world. Big thank you, first of all to our 540 competitors, 368 from uh, the kart racing world, 172 from the eSports arena, uh, representing over 60 different nationalities. We narrowed it down to 72 drivers from 25 respective nationalities, going into two respective pre-finals. Um, but I have the official results in my hands. So let's talk uh, a little bit about what's happened. Um, so in pre-final A, uh, the top 18 were led to the flag by Johnny Gindy, our uh, pace setter after three days of qualification. The Mexican finished uh, just over four and a half tenths of a second ahead of uh, Patrick Woods Toth with uh, Kenneth O'Keefe, uh, making it a Canadian 2-3. Then it was Austria's Martin Renhofer with uh, uh, Hungary's uh, Laszlo Zwaver rounding out the top five, uh, all covered by around 13.7 seconds. Then it was a uh, Maxi uh, Batifoulier, uh, Curtis Fong, uh, Louis Stockfleth, uh, Martin Brouwers from the Netherlands, and Jersey Glatch running at the uh, top 10. Then it was uh, Dragos uh, Avis Le Coute, um that was in 11th ahead of Anthony, Mi um, An Anthony Milo. Uh, Richard Basford, uh, Basford uh, Dimitri Kofanov, uh, Flavio Dantes, Justin Allison, uh, Alberto Palencia, and uh, Nino Heipel. That rounded out the 18. At post race, we had a 10 second penalty handed to Zabo Bodazar, causing a collision. Obviously, that was the one uh, that Nicolas Zabo uh, was involved with, but he got disqualified post race uh, due to uh, a retaliation, I think is the terminology. Uh, Nino Heipel got a 10 second penalty, uh, so was actually uh, luckily still able to get through into the top 18. Uh, Alexandru uh, Raleino, I think from Moldova, uh, was 19th ahead of Marcus Luzio. Uh, one of two Brits eliminated, unfortunately, in the qualification stages. Uh, he was followed by Tony Blasco. Phil Hill was on the verge of being in the top 18, but got taken out with a couple of laps to go going into the first corner. A shame for the German, um, because we, we felt that he was going to get in there. Uh, Samuel Harrison, uh, the other Brits, unfortunately eliminated, ended up 23rd, 56.8 seconds down. Uh, from the eventual winner from Mexico. Uh, Ad, uh, Adilson uh, Jr., Hannes Hofbauer, Eugene, uh, Eugene Britz, uh, Nathan Brito, uh, Charles Baer, uh, Benjamin Jorgensen, uh, Satuka, Valentin Klus uh, would retire, would be classified a lap down, so a shame for the German who ended up in the pits, if memory serves me correctly, due to an issue. Um, Zabo Baldessar was qualified 32nd ahead of Raphael Renhofer, the other uh, a, a fellow Renhofer, so one uh, made it through, the other one eliminated, unfortunately, with Joao de Gregorio uh, bringing up the rear. We then get on to what was an interesting second race and plenty of action, I must be completely honest. I mean, it was a great drag race to the to the first corner. Obviously, you had the likes of Diogo Francisco, Nico Nassi, uh, four-time Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals participant. Uh, as a competitor in senior Rotax, he told me that he made the final once. Uh, and then a subsequent three respective visits to the grand finals, twice as a photographer, once as a mechanic. So he's had uh, he's had seven times the amount of experience in the grand finals than I had personally. But um, so we had Guilherm de Oliveira, Robert de Haan, junior road tax champion of the grand finals in 2018 in Conde Pareba. Um, and uh, we saw some great drives. De Haan was one of them. Uh, Matt Higgins, Matthew Higgins from uh, uh, from Wales, 
um, with Dan Holland Racing, he had a bit of a disaster. He started P34 in qualifying because his dad David told me by Facebook Messenger, it's great what uh, modern technology can do. Um, but we had a really good race and uh, Zander Schiblack unfortunately was one of the early eliminees, the Belgian, the sole Belgian that made it through, two-time BNL Karting Series defending champion, taken out uh, within the first third of the lap. Real shame for Zander because he could have been a force to regret to be reckoned with. Uh, so he ended up being uh, in P36. Uh, other noticeable drivers that uh, wouldn't make it through to the, the grand final, uh, Linus Hansen, Lucas Thompson, both finishing 31st and 32nd respectively. Um, then we had Lopez, uh, Alfonso Lopez, uh, Dorin uh, Chargonja, Dar Chargona um, would end up uh, being classified nine laps down off of the leaders at the end of it. Uh, Marcel van der Eckert from the Netherlands, uh, P30. Uh, Santiago Cabrera ended up having a massive accident coming out of the final corner um, and several drivers were involved there. Eric Kuhn uh, was having a battle for the, the last few positions, got taken out, unfortunately. Uh, Beth, uh, Benny S uh, Simonson, um, absolute great recovery drive from him uh, because he was, in, he was in the pits for 33 seconds and then we saw him come out and fight his way back. Uh, so the top 18 that made it through were Diogo Francisco, who won it. A great move up the in, uh, a great move uh, on Florian Garcia uh, on the penultimate lap from Jan Schwitter to take second by 5.1 seconds off of Francisco. Miko Nassi rounded out the top three, being in the hunt. Uh, Daniel Daum uh, would end up fourth ahead of uh, my very good friend from Portugal, Guilherme de Oliveira from KR Sports. Uh, Florian Garcia was six ahead of Robert Dehaan, who had a great few battles with the likes of Teddy Sim and Philip Hammer and uh, Suljac. Um, so those rounded out the top ten. Jose um, Soria and Gerardo Ramos would complete the top twelve ahead of Max Palm. Matthew Higgins started P thirty four, managed to avoid the uh, Cabrera accident, and uh, ended up fifteenth ahead of fourteenth uh, ahead of Gabriel Solomon. Uh, Martina Lackner was on the. Uh, on the precipice, she got it through uh, and ended up 16th. Eddie Betty Simonson with Marcel Davasi being the last of the classified drivers. Uh, and um, one driver that actually got a penalty was Daniel Vedeking uh, from Germany, a 10 second penalty for a crash, which involved a few of those other people. Uh, Benny Simonson's uh, incident with Eric Kuhn, who was on the verge of getting into the top 18. Kuhn was spun around, but it was a, it was an avoidable accident. It was an unavoidable accident, racing incident, it was classed as. Um, so uh, we also had Max Palm actually got a five second penalty for a clash, a, a crash. Uh, we had Garcia uh, ended up having a five second penalty, so would have actually have qualified up in P3 behind Schwitter, but was found to be in violation of tra track limits. And also we had another penalty, Brent Gilks, um, ended up being in 22nd position, but that was after a 10 second penalty post race was applied uh, for uh, causing a collision. Then we turn our attention to the final of the Rotax Sim Racing Challenge, where we have now finally crowned our inaugural winner. Um, we had three disqualifications, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get onto that uh, one of them in, in particular. But we had a great battle between the likes of Diogo Francisco, Patrick Woods Toth. Uh, you also had Miko Nassi, uh, Benny Simonson was getting very racy, Matthew Higgins was getting up the order, uh, Guilherme de Oliveira, uh, Jan Schwitzer all had troubles, um, but we had a massive collision, I think a couple of laps before the end of the race, and it involved uh, Anthony Milo, who was promptly disqualified post-race. Um, the top four, which was Woods Toth, Francisco, and Nassi was in there, and Nassi had... Um, what was what the problem was is that one of the drivers went wide. I think it might have been somebody in second or third place. Can't remember off the top of my head because there, there's so much information to try and remember as a commentator. Uh, but Anthony Milo was found to be on the inside, so he was a back marker. Leader got past, so uh, Woods Toth and Francisco managed to get away. Uh, Miko Nassi unfortunately uh, had nowhere to go. Someone was uh, impeded by the back marker, the guy in third place, and then all of a sudden Nassi. Um, had nowhere to go, collected the other driver, ended off the circuit, and then all of a sudden you got Benny Simonson, um, you got uh, Gerardo Ramos, um, and uh, another driver, and Matt, uh, and it just went uh, and nasty, and it just all kicked off, and everyone's race was ruined. 
Uh, but in the end, our winner of the inaugural uh, Rotax Sim Racing Challenge for 2020 goes to Canada's Patrick Woodstoth, who is a Rotax racer. He did enter as a sim racer, but I know for a fact he was at the Grand Finals last year. So many congratulations. Patrick picks up the ticket for the e -Kart Grand Finals at the Bahrain International Karting Circuit between the 7th and the 14th of November. Uh, Diogo Francisco, who battled all the way to the end, and Woodstoth just did, uh, did what was needed to be done. He was patient, he held his nerve, and sprung with about five corners to go. I think it was through Piper that he, uh, Revolver or Piper, that he made the move stick on Diogo Francisco, who ended up finishing behind the Canadian by just over two tenths of a second at the flag. Kenneth O'Keefe made it two Canadians in the top three, rounding out the top three podium, uh, a further 1.4 or so seconds behind. Laszlo Zwaver from Hungary was fourth place, and uh, Curtis Fung rounds out the top five. Now, Patrick has the ticket. Uh, Diogo Francisco has 500 euros prize money as a result of the, uh, the race side of things. Kenneth O'Keefe takes 250 euros for his troubles this week as uh, Laszlo Suevo picks up at 150 euros and Curtis Fung 50 euros. We know that uh, there are some people that are not happy with what's happened uh, regarding Anthony Milo. He has been excluded, which is the only uh, fitting thing that we can do in this circumstance, but it obviously took away from us a great battle that could have seen a four-way scrap to the end of the race. Um, once again, a big thank you on behalf of everyone from uh, BRP Rotax. Uh, from, uh, we'd like to thank all our distributors, all our championship promoters that have been uh, really, really interactive with us on social media via Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Um, and we really do appreciate it. We will keep you posted of any future developments of what's happening from our perspective uh, in the coming weeks and months, obviously, depending on how long the pandemic carries on. But we really do thank you for your support as always. And we do appreciate you being so very fastidious in staying safe, staying at home and looking after one another. We look forward to seeing you all very, very soon trackside. But for now, from my home office here in the United Kingdom, on behalf of the Rotax Max uh, Sim Racing Challenge and BRP Rotax, this is Alex Goldschmidt signing off. Thank you very much. We will see you soon when all things Rotax returns. Thanks for watching.